Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the LMN Academy Virtual Classroom. Sorry, I say good afternoon, but for some of you who may be on the West Coast, it may still be morning. So uh, look what you get to look forward to. Um, my name is Chris Davies, and I am one of the uh, client success managers as well as a LMN Academy trainer here at LMN. And today, uh, we're going to uh, walk through a course on budgeting. So shotgun course on budgeting today. Uh, so on the agenda, we'll be looking at creating a business plan with the LMN budgeting tool. Uh, we'll forecast your sales goals uh, for the upcoming year. We'll plan out your labor, equipment, material, uh, subcontractor course as they relate to your sales goal. And we'll also look at outlining all your overhead expenses to recover those through an overhead markup on your estimating. Uh, and then uh, finally, we'll look at analyzing your LMN budget to ensure that you're going to be profitable across your divisions. Um, so the tools that you'll need for today um, are your profit and loss summary, uh, or sorry, profit and loss statement, uh, a payroll summary for your employees, if you've got one of those handy, uh, a list of equipment with um, payment or purchase information so that we can add those to the budget. Um, if you have any questions, um, please hold on. Uh, we will be taking about 10, 15 minutes towards the end of the webinar today. Uh, to go over any questions that you may or uh, that you may have in regards to uh, the budgeting tool, the budgeting software, uh, and also be advised that uh, this webinar will be recorded. So um, if you want to recap or go over anything again, uh, a copy of the webinar will be emailed to you uh, later today. All right. So with all that being said, let's hop into the actual uh, webinar, and uh, we'll start with the budgeting. All right, so the budgeting, what's in a budget? So the budget is overall your business plan. All right, so we're gonna look at your sales, so all the money that's coming into your business. Uh, we're gonna look at your cost of goods sold, so your field wages, your equipment costs, material costs, as well as subcontractor costs. Your overhead, which is your company over our operating costs, so those things that you don't normally charge out for on an estimate, but you still need to recuperate those costs. And of course, your net profit. So we want to look and see what are uh, what's going to be your net profit after you know uh, your cost of goods, your overhead is taken into consideration. What's your net profit going to look like uh, against your sales forecast? So why do we create a budget? Well, the first thing is the confidence. Okay, so it provides you with confidence in pricing out your work. So with Element's budgeting tool, you'll be able to. Uh, basically, you'll be, again, confident in that every single one of your estimates are going to be profitable. All right. So um, if you haven't registered yet, I highly advise you register for Wednesday's class where we look at creating estimates. And you can see how the budget uh, actually reflects in an estimate and shows you how you're, uh, where you're profitable um, once you've created that estimate against all your actual operating costs and cost of goods sold. Okay. Uh, it provides you with a clear plan, okay? So again, if you're looking at growing your business this year, um, you know, the budget will actually help you see if you can afford to hire new employees or uh, give them uh, pay increases, bonuses, um, you know, raises, et cetera. Uh, it'll also tell you if you have enough money to invest within the company. So if you're planning on expanding or doing some renovations on the actual company itself, uh, the budget will actually see will help you forecast to see you know if there's money allowable to do something uh, to do some renovations or some enhancements on your own uh, your own business and of course produce a net profit every single year all right so that's the goal here is uh, your guys are uh, I mean you're not in business for free uh, so we want to make sure that you're uh, that you're profitable every single year so the budgeting tool will uh, basically determine on every single one of your estimates if you're going to be profitable. All right, so some of the best practices when it comes to uh, creating a budget uh, using the LMN budgeting tool is start with a company-wide budget. All right, so it'll be a little bit easier for you to uh, break a company-wide budget down into divisions um, once you start off with that company-wide budget. So get all your apples and oranges all into one basket first and then start dividing it up amongst your different divisions if that's what you want to do going forward. Okay, but again, start with a company-wide budget to, uh, to get going. Uh, use the copy button to create new budgets. 
All right. So if you haven't created a budget yet in LMN, uh, well, we highly advise that you start with one of our sample budgets uh, and then just press the copy button and we'll walk through that process shortly. But it basically allows you to start from scratch. Um, but again, with some detail or with some numbers already in there that kind of give you a guideline on, on what you need to do with your budget. Uh, the second reason for using the copy feature is every year when you renew your budget, you don't start from scratch uh, every every single year. So you would take you know this year's budget, copy it for next year, and use all of the numbers from this year as your what we call our pre your previous numbers, so that you can look at forecasting for 2021. Uh, review and update your budget annually. Okay, so that goes without saying. So every year, uh, costs are going to change. Um, you know, uh, there's the cost of living expenses go up, prices go up from your vendors, so on and so forth. So you want to make sure that you review and update your budget annually. Um, as a, another little inside tip and trick, uh, we also would probably recommend that you look at your budget uh, on a more frequent basis, right? Um, things that you're going to change periodically over the course of a year. Um, you know, who who foresaw uh, COVID happening this year and really affecting everybody. So, um, you know, don't, we would probably recommend that you would uh, hop into your budget and make an adjustment based on that, uh, based on situations like that. Or again, um, you know, maybe you've had a couple people just decide to suddenly move away. Um, so that's going to reflect, reflect on some of your forecasts. So, you know, let's, uh, I would probably suggest taking a look at your budget quarterly. Uh, or, you know, at the, at the very least, um, you know, halfway through the year, you know, at the six month period, take a look at your numbers to see, are you on track, uh, against your sales forecast for what you, what you set in the, uh, in the budget at the beginning of the year when you first, uh, when you first created your budget. Okay. And just again, as another helpful hint, you want to use the sample budget, uh, to create your first budget. So if today is your first time, uh, playing around in the budgeting tool, then uh, we'll show you how to grab one of the sample budgets to make a copy to get started. All right, so let's take a look in LMN and see how uh, all this works. All right, so first you're gonna log in to uh, LMN Estimating. And at the very top of your screen in the left menu, you're gonna see under LMN Estimating, Budget. Okay, so when you first open your budget uh, tab, you're gonna see a list of budgets there. So of course, being one of the trainers here at LMN and one of the client success managers, I've got a, a myriad or a bunch of different budgets that, um, that I have to work with. Um, but to start with today, let's take a look at some of the sample budgets. So you should see uh, four or five sample budgets um, in your actual account. Again, if this is the first time you've played around with the budgeting tool. And these budgets are set based on um, just thresholds, right? So you've, you know, there's one for 600, there's one for 1 million, 2.5, 10 million. So if your sales forecast is somewhere in the area of one of those budgets, um, we recommend that you grab that one that's closest to what you think is going to be your sales forecast this year. So if you're forecasting, you know, $1.5 million in revenue or in sales this year, then I would probably start with the sample budget too and work with that one to, to kind of get going. So that being said, let's take a look at uh, the, the 1 million budget or the uh, sample budget number two, okay, and how this would work. So for those of you at home or at the office, wherever you may be, if this is the budget that's closest to you and this is the one that you're gonna work with today, so what we wanna do is we wanna go down to the bottom right-hand corner here and click on the copy button. All right, and today we're just going to rename this. So we're going to call it Virtual Academy 2020 budget. Okay, and the budget year is for 2020, not for 2018. And the company name is In the Thicket Landscaping. So that's my fictitious uh, landscaping company. So let's click OK. All right, so now a new budget page opens up and you'll see over in the top right hand corner, it says under construction. All right. So that just means that you are building your budget at this point. So let's take a look at some of the, uh, some of the data that we have on this page just to kind of get started here. So uh, it provides us with a quick summary goal or a quick summary um, window here in the top left hand corner. And from there, and actually I'm just going to maximize my screen here because we don't need the actual estimating menu at this point. So, 
I have a sales goal of a million dollars. So this might get adjusted. So what you're seeing over in the in this window here is just a summary of everything you, you're going to be doing within your budget. Okay. So at the end, when you've completed your budget, you'll see what your sales goal is, what your net profits are going to be. So not your gross profits, but your net profits. Okay, is what you're targeting, and then what your profit margin percentage is going to be. Okay, so your profit margin percentage is what's going to be applied to every single one of your estimates in order for you to hit this net sales revenue forecasted goal. Okay, then you've got a, a budget history window, so it shows you who the owner is, who created this budget, when it was last updated, and who did the last update. Okay, so if you've got multiple users within your organization that has access to budgeting, and they're gonna be making changes to the budget, then you'll be able to see when it was updated and who did the actual update, okay, in this window itself. All right, coming down into the lower section, we now see our budget properties. So the budget properties is just the name of the budget, the company that it's for, the year, and its current status. And notice that that's not changeable, right? So it is under construction at the moment, so it stays is under construction, okay? And there's steps to activating your budget that will uh, that we'll use uh, at the tail end of today's webinar. All right, next is your work breakdown, okay? So your work breakdown is basically just a slight, a simple little pie chart that will give you a breakdown of the different types of work that you do, okay? And into four different areas, okay? So we've got design, build, and install, grounds maintenance, irrigation, snow and ice. Pretty straightforward, there's just the four categories. These are not customizable, okay? The re main reason for that is we've kept it to a, you know, those four main categories so that we can compare your numbers to other companies or other profitable companies within the industry, okay? So if you're putting in 65% of your total work uh, or your total business is done through design, build, and install on a $1 million sales forecast, the actual budgeting tool, as we kind of go forward and go through the different screens today, will compare your percentage to other companies or other profitable companies and provide you with a uh, an industry average, if you will, okay? So if you wanna make any changes to this, go please go right ahead, right? So if I know that my design build is roughly 50%, or actually let's just say my, yeah, 50%, my, uh, sales of uh, ground maintenance is 35, okay, I would want to make sure that my snow and ice is 15, right? I don't do any irrigation. So just as long as it adds up to 100%, right, it gives you a final total, right? Once you've made those changes, please make sure you hit your save changes button, right? And I can't stress this enough. It's a very important feature. Uh, LMN does not auto save everything. So there are a few screens where you're gonna have to make sure that you save your changes. And I highly advise that, you know, if you're on one of the pages, first take a look up in the top right hand corner. If that save changes button is there, then you know you're gonna have to do a save once you do actually do some edits, okay? So again, keep that in mind and always, you know, continue to save your changes, all right? So again, now that we've got our budget info screen pretty much done, We've saved our changes, we can now move on to our next section, okay, which is where we're gonna talk about our sales budget. Okay, so your sales budget. So what are you including in your sales budget? So this is where you're gonna outline and forecast your sales goal for the year. You're gonna determine how much revenue you're bringing in and ensure that we recover all of our expenses, okay? So that's what our sales budget is gonna do for us. So when we talk about our best practices when setting up your sales budget, you want to make sure that you're realistic. Don't over under, or sorry, don't over or underestimate your sales goals. Okay, if you think you're going to do 1.25 million dollars this year, then put in 1.25 million dollars. Okay, if you'd like to hit 1.25, but you know that you're only going to do maybe 1.1, put in 1.1. Okay, so don't over forecast uh, just based on you know hope. Okay, just put in what your real numbers are. And again, we all know what happened this year and what we're still currently dealing with. So you may want to um, consider that while you're building your budget. Again, if this is the first time doing that. When you're actually setting up your sales goals or your actual sales forecast numbers, those you can set up by division. So I've put down that I do design build, grounds maintenance, and snow and ice. So when I actually set up my sales forecast, my actual numbers for each of those divisions, I'm gonna set those up based on 
those three divisions. Okay, and remember what we talked about, or one of the tips that we talked about at the beginning of the webinar today was, let's build out one big company-wide budget first, and then we can start splitting it up into actual divisional budgets if that's a route that you want to take. Okay. Next, don't forget to include cash sales. Okay, so that is still revenue coming into the company. Okay, so you still want to actually count that as one of your sales forecast line items. Okay, it might be marginal, may only be you know a few thousand dollars, it may only be a few hundred dollars, but make sure you still include that as far as your um, your sales forecast. Okay, and lastly, don't stress. Okay, we can pinpoint your exact goals after your after you've actually built the budget and you've got that foundation going that's when you can start doing a little bit more uh, detailed work within the budget, okay? So let's take a look at how we build out our sales forecast. All right, so now we're back into our budget and now we click on our sales tab, which gives us that $1 million sample that we talked about before, but now we wanna do a little bit different, right? So I wanna take a look at my budget info and I've got 50 in design build, 35 in grounds maintenance and 15 in snow and ice. So when I factor out in my sales forecast, I've got installation, I've got maintenance, I've got snow and ice. If I want to add, you know, we talked about one of the tips here is cash sales and I want to put in an amount there. Well, I just would click on the new button in the bottom right hand corner and I would forecast what I'm planning on doing in cash sales this year. All right. So my landscape install makes up 50% of my total. One million dollars. So if I were to say my forecast is 680, well, my sales forecast is going to be a little bit higher than this this year, right? So I want to look at maybe 750 this year, and then I'm doing 25 or 35 percent here. Let's add a couple more zeros to make it actually work properly. Okay, and let's put in 250,000 in. It should be 350. Okay, and then snow and ice, we're going to forecast one 150. Okay, and then our cash sales, I'm just going to forecast 10,000. All right, so there is my sales forecast for this year. Okay, if you're working with a an existing budget and you're updating it for the new year, then you take your original budget numbers where you had your forecasted numbers and put them in your previous, okay? So if you have your profit and loss statement, look and see what each division did last year or the past two years, okay? If you wanna take an average of the two, you can do that as well, okay? So maybe look at uh, 2019 and 2018, take a combination of the two, see what your growth patterns were maybe between 18 and 19, 10%, 15%, 20%, 5%. What was your growth? Okay, and then maybe add that same growth in for the for the uh, for this current year. Okay, so again, it's entirely up to you how you want to um, how you want to forecast. But again, be realistic into your numbers. Okay, so at this moment, I'm just walking you through the process. So I'm not being realistic, right? I'm forecasting 1.26 over uh, a one million dollar but or an eight hundred and forty thousand dollar budget the previous year. Right, because I'm looking at a 50% change um, from last year to this year, so a bit bit aggressive. So I can modify this a little bit here, okay, and keep it nice and simple. So again, that button showed up in the top right hand corner. So once I actually put my numbers in, I'm going to click Save Changes and make sure that I save what I've just done in my budget. If you want to add any particular little notes to each forecast uh, line item please go right ahead, just type it in here, and then you're all set. All right, so let's show some growth. Okay, perfect, save our changes. Okay, and next we're now set with our sales forecast, and now we wanna start putting in our uh, cost of goods, right? So field labor, equipment, materials, and subcontracting. But let's take a look at field labor first. All right, so when we're looking at our field labor section in our budget, this is all your forecasted labor costs, your employee wages, any bonuses, and you're also looking at your overtime, okay? So these are all expenses that you have to pay out uh, for your labor force. So some of the best practices that we would recommend here or that you wanna consider are you're entering in your field staff only, okay? 
Okay, so these are not for um, employees of yours that are mainly within the office, general managers that are just strictly in the office, maybe the owner who's just strictly in the office. Okay, um, these are just for employees who are out in the field, right, which is why we call it our, our field labor budget. You want to forecast your labor versus your sales goal. Okay, so again, what we're doing here is we're actually taking a percentage of what we spend on our uh, payroll versus what we're pulling in from our sales forecast. And that's what's going to give us our industry average, or sorry, that's what's going to compare us to the industry average. You want to make sure that you include raises. So if there are employees that you are looking to provide a raise for this year, you want to make sure that you include that in your forecast, okay? Because the last thing you want to be doing is promising your foreman or promising employees a raise this year and you haven't forecasted high enough and you won't be able to uh, afford it, okay? And the last thing you, you know, this, the other last thing you want to do is not take it out of your net revenue or your net profits. You want to be able to forecast this so that your actual profits are profits, okay, that are going back into the company. You want to group your staff by rule, okay? So in this situation where we're building out our field labor force, we don't need to put down Mike and Steve and Dave and John, okay? All we need to do is put in foreman. I've got three foremen. They all make X amount of dollars per hour. I've got eight general laborers. They all make this amount of hour. I've got two snowplow operators. Or I've got two installers or I've got two whatever. Okay, we don't need to put down individuals' names. Okay, the reason for that, people may come and go. Okay, so it just, rather than you going back into having to edit your budget to take, you know, Steve out because he left, you know, he decided to get a job in insurance or car salesman. You want to be able to just keep it nice and straightforward. I've got three foremen. Oh, now I've got two. Okay, I've got eight general laborers. Okay, now I've got ten. All right, you just do it nice and simple. That it's just easier that way. You want to make sure that you include your owner's wage if your owner is temporarily in the field, right? So if your owner splits your time, it splits their time fifty-fifty. You know, sometimes in the office or sometimes in the field, you're going to split their salary um, or their hourly wage in the actual field. And lastly, if you hire temporary labor, um, maybe in the in the winter time you've got uh, you hire students to help you with snow removal, or in the summertime you hire students um, to you know to do some just general labor work with you. Then make sure you also put that in there. Okay, if you're using a agency, okay. So this is a conversation I had with a recent client. Uh, what if I use a temp agency? Do I put down the wage that I'm paying the actual employee or do I put down the wage that I'm paying the temp, or the, the temp agency? You want to make sure that you put down the, the wage that you're paying the temp agency because that's what it's actually costing you, okay, to actually hire those temporary laborers. All right, so let's take a look at our field labor section. All right, so next call or next option here is field labor. So again, we're going to take a look at some different, we have some different views here where I compare in my field labor ratio. So again, one point, um, $1.16 million sales forecast. So in the industry average, uh, most companies who are in that neighborhood are, have a 27% um, ratio when it comes to their sales forecast versus their uh, labor force, right? So mine's a little bit low, meaning I probably need, if I want to hit that 1.1 uh, sales forecast, I might need a few more employees, okay? So taking a look at this, I have, you know, my install foreman, average wage. I've got two of those. They average 1,800 hours a year, 200 hours of overtime at $21 an hour. My install laborers, I've got three of those, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I just want to put, again, how many of what type of employee I have. Again, I don't need to go in and put down that I've got, you know, Steve, Dave, Mike, and John. In this case, because I'm, again, aggressive on my installation side of things, I might actually increase my uh, install force and keep that at four, keep that, actually, I'll keep that at two, but I'm going to double up on my actual general laborers. Okay, my maintenance foreman, I'm going to actually increase my maintenance to two guys. Okay, and I'm going to save my changes. Okay, when your ratio is green, okay, that means you're closest to the industry average. So you're doing something similar to what, you know, some of the more profitable companies with that same kind of sales forecast is doing in regards to their labor side of things. 
if your number is not green, don't stress. Okay, so this doesn't mean you're wrong. Okay, it doesn't mean that you there's no way you're not going to be able to hit your forecast. It just means that in comparison to other profitable companies with that same sales, um, excuse me, with that same sales forecast, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to do it. It just means again, in comparison to those guys, this is how they're doing it. So you're on a little bit on the lower or higher side. Okay, so again, don't stress. And again, you're not doing anything wrong. It is what you know. Your company is what your company is. So. You know, just it's just a guideline to give you an idea. Okay, so once I've filled out all my uh, individual staff and what type they are, I'll get a field labor summary up here in the top, uh, top sec uh, sorry, top middle section of what my total hours are this year, what my total wages are, what my total burden is, and we'll talk about that in a second to give me a total of what my field payroll is. So now. That 374 or almost 375 is divided up between what my actual sales forecast is, and that's what's giving me my field labor ratio, okay, of 26.9%. So 26.9% of my overall sales forecast is going to go towards my sales, or sorry, to my payroll expenses, okay? So again, once you've done that and you've clicked save changes, okay, you're ready to move on to your next area, okay? But before we do that, there's one thing that you have to consider here, and this is what we call your labor burden, okay? And that's what calculates or helps you calculate out what your total payroll expenses are going to be, okay? Your payroll burden, uh, actually, and we'll, we'll hop back over into the, the slide deck and we'll kind of walk you through those, what the actual definition is. So what is your field labor burden? This is referring to the cost of expenses over and above your field labor wages. So uh, insurance, um, health, uh, health benefits, uh, vacation, sick pay, all those kind of things that you pay over and above uh, your just base wage of you know, $15, $20 an hour, whatever the case may be, that's called your labor burden. Okay? So these are expenses that you have to pay in order to have these employees work for you. All right, so you also want to make sure that you're looking at um, all of these different expenses, so payroll taxes, workers' compensation, unemployment insurance as a percentage. But how do I calculate your labor burden? Okay, so take all of those over and above expenses and divide it by your total field labor wages. Okay, so we've just put in all of our employee types, we've put down all their hours, we've put down their wages. So we do have a total wages amount. Okay, so we know what our actual total wage amount is. So again, take your uh, all those, again, that burden expense and divide it by your total wages and that will give you what your labor burden percentage is. Okay, your industry average is probably going to be sitting somewhere in the 20%, okay, 15 to 20%, give or take, okay. So again, if you come out at like 16 or 18%, you're not wrong. It just means that that's where your, uh, that's what your labor burden percentage is. So I can adjust mine to maybe 18 Okay, click off and save changes. Okay, and now I've got my ratio. So again, to calculate your labor burden, you're going to take your field labor wages divided by sales, or sorry, your field labor ratio is your field labor wages divided by your sales forecast to give you what your ratio is. So again, if you're somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple percent within uh, the industry average, you're fine. Um, if you're way off, Okay, if your percentage is you know very low or much higher than the industry average, just take a look at your numbers. Okay, just take another little uh, deeper check into your actual um, payroll. But again, it doesn't mean that you're you're wrong. Okay, it's just again it's a comparison against the rest of the industry that's at that same level. Okay, so. Most, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, the sale or the field labor ratio does have a range. If you're primarily uh, design build, so if you're heavier on the design build and install, you're going to be somewhere in that 25% range. But if you're heavier on maintenance, so um, you know grounds maintenance or seasonal maintenance, and as well as snow and ice, you're going to be kind of on that 40% range. Okay, so again, it depends on your your business style and your business type and where you're primarily focused in your sales revenue. Okay. So now that we've got our field labor done, 
Uh, we've put in our employees, we've put in our labor burden, so we've calculated out what our actual total field payroll is. We now have to look at our equipment side of things. Okay. So in the equipment side of things, what are we going to be looking at here? So we're now going to be looking at all of our field equipment and vehicle costs. There's four classes when it comes to creating equipment in the actual budget. We've got leased, we've got owned, so owned and financed, grouped and custom. Okay, groups are uh, if for any reason or if you are uh, using a, a trailer, for instance, with mowers, backpack blowers, line trimmers, et cetera, et cetera, you can group those together so that you don't have to line item by line item each individual piece of equipment. Okay, so if you carry the same, you know, few items on a trailer, then you could just group it all together and it makes it a little bit easier to provide you with one overall expense. So some of the best practices we recommend when setting up your equipment is you're only going to be entering equipment that you're using in the field. So if you've got a mini excavator or an excavator or a skid steer back at your yard that you use to uh, move materials around or load and unload uh, your vehicles, then those are not going to be entered into your equipment budget. Okay, not at this point. We'll have a section for that later on. You're going to include owned equipment, even if it's fully paid for. Okay, so uh, crew trucks, for instance, if you've got a couple of crew trucks out there and they're fully paid for, you still want to include those as an actual expense in your budget in the off chance that you may need to replace one of those vehicles because it breaks down or, heaven forbid, gets into an accident and you can't afford to or you don't want to spend on getting it repaired and it makes more sense to you to forecast out the cost of buying a new one then keep make sure that you've got that in your budget. Again, the last thing you want to be doing is having that unexpected expense of having to re replace one of your pieces of equipment and take that out of your net profits when you've already kind of budgeted for it in your actual budget. And now you could just take it, uh, you can go out and be confident that it, it's okay to go out and buy that piece of equipment. Uh, very similar to your field labor, you're going to be grouping your equipment by type. So you don't need to put in that I've got a Ford, a Chevy, and a Dodge Ram. You could just put in your crew trucks and what the uh, average value is of those three vehicles, okay? Uh, if they're all different price, then yeah, okay, if you want to, you can itemize them out individually. Um, and you can be as detailed as you want. We would just recommend that to, to kind of go through the process a little bit easier and quicker is to group your equipment by uh, its overall type. And then also make sure that you're putting in your fuel repairs, insurance, and rental costs um, as well within your equipment budget, okay? So again, you want to, much like your labor burden, where you're calculating the additional expenses to your labor force, there's also additional uh, expenses when it comes to your equipment, right? Repairs, gas, okay? All that kind of stuff. Those are additional expenses, so you want to make sure you capture that. Again, not taking it out of our net profits at the end of the year, okay? And just again, just to kind of keep everybody um, in, in the right frame of mind, depreciation, we don't need to calculate that separately, okay? Our, our calculator or our cost calculator that we have built into LMN, and we'll walk through that in a short, uh, in, a, in a minute, does include depreciation, all right? So you don't have to worry about, well, over a five-year period or an eight-year period or a 10-year period, what's this, uh, you know, piece of equipment actually going to cost me? Okay, we actually have a depreciation uh, factor included in the actual price calculator for you. All right, so let's take a look and see how that looks over in LMN. Okay, so back here into our budget, and now we're going to go down to our next tab on the left-hand side, which is the equipment section. Okay, so now we're just going to put in all of our pieces of equipment that we that we use uh, for the company, right? So backhoe loaders, how many crew trucks do we have? How many five-ton crew trucks do we have? Okay, so you may want to go by size. You may want to just go by overall. It's entirely up to you, okay? So I'm going to just put in now uh, that I'm going to be running two five-ton trucks. Excuse me, okay? I've got a backhoe loader that I use for snow only. I've got a trailer for install and construction. I've got two of those, and I've got a trailer for maintenance. So I've got one of those, right? So I do have my equipment list already set up. When I want to create a new piece of equipment in your budget, you're going to click on the plus new, okay? The reason why we suggested using a sample budget is because a lot of the uh, equipment that's already in the budget 
you know, is, is pretty commonplace within uh, a landscaping company. So, you know, feel free if you want to save yourself some time to use some of the examples that we've already provided you within the budget. If those ones don't make any sense to you whatsoever and you want to just start from scratch, you can just simply use the action button on the far right hand side and delete them right out of the actual budget and start completely from scratch. Okay. So again, if I want to add a new piece of equipment, so maybe I'm going, I want to add in another, uh, a larger excavator that I purchased last year. Okay. I click in new and put in what the piece of equipment is in my blank field here. No, no P and excavator. I've got one of those and what's the class? Okay, so remember, we had four different types of classes. We had custom, owned, leased, or group, okay? So in this situation, I'm leasing this excavator. The moment I click one of the class options, okay, a calculator will open up for me to actually figure out what my costs are. So enter the monthly payment including tax. Well, let's say it's 3,500, right? And again, pardon my ignorance, I don't know what it costs to buy an excavator. How many payments do I make a year? I make 12 payments a year. And the number of months I plan on using it, well, you know what? Something that big and that expensive, there's a reason why I purchased it. You know, I'm going to use it all year round. If this is something that I only use seasonally, maybe spring through fall for pools and whatever else, I can adjust this to say eight months. Okay. And so if this is a divisional budget, enter the number of months this equipment works in this division. Okay, so again, if it's divisional, it's only operative for eight months, I'm going to keep it at eight months. So once I've done that, I click on done, and it calculates out what my actual cost per year is on that piece of equipment. Okay, and then adds it into my total equipment expenses. Up in the top left hand corner, you've got your general expenses. So consider this as your equipment burden, if you will. Okay, you're going to put in your forecast fuel forecast repairs and any insurance and miscellaneous costs you have with any of the equipment that's in this section. So once you put all that together, that will factor in your total equipment expenses, okay? Equipment rentals, just so that everybody is aware, okay, is not included in the overall ratio calculation against the industry average. The reason for that is is not everybody rents equipment, okay? So this could be 2500, it could be $25,000 it will not affect your overall ratio against the industry average with whatever number you put in here. Okay, if you do not use rentals, put in zero. Okay, just leave it blank. Okay, there's no reason to put in a cost if you don't actually use rentals. Okay, so notice my ratio didn't change. I can put in $50,000 in equipment rentals. Okay, my ratio still doesn't change. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that at zero. Okay, and again, once you finish your sale, or sorry, once you finish your equipment budget, make sure you hit your save changes button. So let's click on save changes, okay? And now that's locked in, okay? But again, I can go back to this later and I can make any changes that I need to make uh, as I need to. All right, so now let's take a look at our next section, which is gonna be our materials. Okay, so when we're talking about our material budget, our material budget is any materials that we're using in our field to basically generate our sales forecast, right? So anything that we're planning on selling. So if you're doing uh, more maintenance, you know, you have mulch, you have what have you, um, topsoil, sod, fertilizers, all that kind of stuff, you're going to want to make sure you, know, you have to purchase that stuff. Um, but so you want to make sure you account for those purchases and what you plan on selling it for uh, this year or in your budget. So again, uh, any job material expenses. So the best practices when setting up your material budget is you're only going to be entering materials you're using in the field. Okay, so again, if you're planning on selling X amount of dollars in mulch, and X amount of dollars in salt, and X amount of dollars in fertilizers, you're going to be wanting to put those into your actual um, sales forecast against, you know, either your install division or your maintenance or your snow and ice. Okay, just again to kind of backtrack a little bit about touching base on your um, your actual budget itself and how often you should take a look at it and make adjustments. Well, you know, for those of you who are doing snow removal, you know, salt prices fluctuate uh, when you're talking about uh, laying down salt in parking lots and, and driveways and what have you. 
So at the beginning of the year, if you forecasted X amount of dollars for salt, but then the prices increase, right, you then have to kind of adjust your material section here to account for that increase or decrease. Let's hope it decreases. Um, you know, and that way you can actually look at what your overall material expenses are going to be. Uh, you want to make sure that you're forecasting all your material costs. So anything that you're planning on using in the field. Okay. And again, if you are forecasting higher in overall sales revenue, then chances are pretty good that your material costs are also going to go up versus last year, right? So if you're experiencing or you're, you know, forecasting out a 30% increase in overall sales this year, well, maybe your materials are going to go up by an additional 15 or 20%, right? You're going to need more materials to, to generate more overall sales revenue. You're going to group your material totals by division. So much like we did with our sales forecast in the first section, we're going to do the same thing with our materials. So I have design build, grounds maintenance, snow and ice, cash sales. Okay, I want to put in materials based on those same three or four for cash. Okay, and don't forget your job disposal fees. Okay, so if you pay for job disposal fees, make sure that you also include that in your material budget as well. All right, so let's take a look and see what that looks like in LMN. All right, so we're going to go to our materials section here now, okay, and we're going to take a look at our materials. Okay, so down here in the bottom, we're just going to put down materials for installation is going to be 190,000. Materials for maintenance is going to be 10,000. Materials for snow and ice is going to be 18,000. So what are our numbers? So take a look at what you spent last year. Look at what you're forecasting as an increase from last year to this year in your sales revenue. And maybe that will give you a slight guideline into what you should be forecasting your uh, material costs for this coming year. All right, so let's say my uh, maintenance, okay, I'm looking at a 94% increase, almost double uh, what, I, what I did last year in maintenance. So in my materials will probably be double what I spent last year. So if I change this to 12,000, okay, or maybe 11.5, Okay, that gives me my increase there. My materials in, in my install division is 15.2%, but in sales, I'm looking at 12%. So let's just keep that, uh, and I can take a look at that later on and see where I'm at against my forecast later on in the year. Snow and ice, same idea. You know, sales last year was 80, planning on doing 150 this year, which means I'm going to be selling more salt. So I'm going to increase this to 20,000. Okay, it makes a little bit more sense that I'm spending, actually, it's probably going to be a little bit higher than that, let's say 25 or 35, okay? So I'm going to spend a lot more in, in snow or in salt materials or snow and ice materials than I did last year due to the fact that I'm growing it that much. So if I click Save Changes, it'll save those numbers in, okay? Last thing you want to consider are your material taxes. So if you pay taxes on your materials when you're doing your purchasing, you can do one of two things, okay? If you've included those, that percentage or that tax within your actual forecasted amount, great. Leave that there, leave this blank, okay? If you haven't and you pay like 3%, 2%, 5% material tax on all your materials, then just enter that percentage up here. So if this is just the overall cost before taxes, then put those amounts there and only use the material tax again if you have a material tax percentage over and above the numbers you've put in your forecast. Okay, so we're going to look at our previous total uh, from last year is 188. So my previous ratio against the industry average was 22.4. This year my current ratio is 239. Or sorry, my current total is 239.5, and my current ratio is 20.6%. Okay, so I'm still well within the industry average, just by you know 1% shy of the industry average. So I'm green, I hit my save changes, and I'm good to go. Again, very common, if you wanna add any more materials, down the bottom here, you can click new, and maybe I can include cash sale materials. Okay, and maybe that's gonna be, I don't know, two grand, okay? So that I just in, in it just adds to my overall numbers and increases my my ratio by very marginally. All right. Again, I save my changes. Okay. 
So once you've got your materials done, again, make sure you save your changes, and then we can move on to the next section within, uh, within LMN. So our subcontractor budget. And what does your subcontractor budget look like? Okay, so again, this is all associated costs relating to subs that you, that you can add a markup on for all of their work. Okay, just because you're using a subcontractor doesn't mean you can't make a little bit of profit on these, okay, as well. So with subcontractors, you just want to list out the different types of subs that you have. You don't need to put out the companies that you work with, just the individual types. So if you use a carpenter for fences and decks, then you put in carpentry sub. Pools, if you sub that out, pool sub. You know, irrigation, if you sub that out, irrigation sub, so on and so forth. You just want to make it nice and easy. So again, you want to set your subcontractor budget on forecasted job sales, not on last year's expenses. Okay, so again, if you're forecasting $50,000 in subcontractor sales, you can put that in your sales forecast as a separate line item. And you want to set your subcontractor uh, amounts based on how much you plan on selling with that type of subcontractor. Okay, again, you're going to enter your subcontractors by service type. Okay, don't put them in individually. So you don't want Dave's pool and spa. You just want pool sub. Okay, so how does that look over an LMN? Okay, so our next section here is our subcontracting. Okay, so again, we're just going to put down irrigation subs. I'm going to, I'm going to actually decrease the amount of... Um, money that I spend on irrigation subs this year and my carpentry deck and woodwork subs, I'm going to stay the same. Okay, If I decide that I'm going to spend a little bit more or I plan on gaining a little bit more revenue this year in subcontractors, I can just forecast it a little bit higher. Bear in mind that there is no industry average comparison when you're looking <clears throat> at your subcontracting budget. Okay, The reason for that is not all companies use the subcontractors, so there's no reason, there's no way we can actually um, compare it against an industry average. Okay, so once you put your numbers in, click your save changes, okay, but you still will be provided your own ratio of what you're spending against your sales forecast when it comes to your subcontractors, okay? So in my case, just less than 1% of my sales forecast is going to go to my subcontractors, okay? Okay, and next, once that's done, okay, again, very simple exercise. If you have some, put them in. If you don't use subcontractors, don't put them in, leave it blank, okay? Nice and simple. Next, we're gonna take a look at our overhead expenses, okay? And this is probably gonna take you the longest part of um, building your budget is your overhead expenses, okay? Your overhead expenses are your um, basically all your indirect costs, okay? So these are all the costs that you have to maintain your, to keep, basically operate your business that you can't bill out to an actual, uh, or bill out through a estimate. Okay, so your forecast expenses are any overhead equipment, right? So again, remember that, you know, skid steer or mini excavator that I talked about that stays at the yard? That's where this is going to go. You're also going to be looking at overhead equipment burden, right? So again, your fuel, insurance costs, maintenance, all that kind of stuff, that would go into your overhead. And of course, your owner's salary, okay? So if your owner is primarily salary-based, doesn't matter if they're in the field or not in the field, okay? If they're primarily salary-based and they don't bill their time out to their actual customer on a per-job basis, then you're not going to put them in the field labor section. You're going to put them in the overhead section, okay? Anybody who's 100% who's back at the office and not billing customers on an estimate for their time will go in your, uh, your overhead um, section for uh, salary. All right, so let's take a look in, uh, at what our overhead looks like. Okay, so again, next section here, we've saved our changes. We now go down into overhead. Again, if you're using one of the sample budgets, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of line items in there already um, that are probably very common to what you have with as far as your total overhead expenses are. The amounts will probably will need to be adjusted. Um, but again, most of the information that's in the actual overhead section already from the sample, you can use that and just change the amounts. One of the things that you want to take a look at, and please, if you haven't already, consider your LMN subscription as a overhead expense, okay? So again, if it's not already in the sample budget, make sure you have uh, software, okay, included in your budget, all right? So for those of you who are on an LMN Pro or an LMN Basic, 
make sure that you've got uh, your LMN subscription, QuickBooks, right? Anything that you're paying for uh, goes into uh, your overhead budget. Okay, and again, you're just gonna forecast what you're planning on spending this year for your overhead versus what you spent last year. Okay, and then next section is gonna be your overhead wages. So again, anybody who is in the office primarily and the owner, okay, their, their, um, their expenses or those expenses will go in the overhead wages section. And remember, in your overhead wages, you're also going to be calcul calculating out what your labor burden is for those employees. Okay, so if you've got a couple people who are working primarily in the office, you want to make sure that you forecast the burden uh, for those employees as well. Okay, and you do so up here. Now, bear in mind, this amount or this percentage is going to be or should be uh, much lower than what your field labor uh, burden was. Okay. Uh, and again, you're going to see what your overhead ratio is in comparison to the industry average because everybody has overhead expenses. So we can provide you with that information. Okay. And then lastly, you've got your overhead equipment. So you've got your overhead fuel your overhead repairs and maintenance, owner's truck, right? We've got one lease truck calculated out at $9,000 a year is what it costs us. Shop materials and consumables, okay? These again would be part of the overhead equipment. Uh, if I have maybe um, general manager has his own truck that's not billed out on, a, um, on an estimate, I can figure out what this is going to be. So this is, let's say this is leased as well. All right, enter monthly payment. I can say that this is, I don't know, 250 a month. How many payments do I make a year? 12, 12, 12, right? I make 12 payments a year. I plan on using it for 12 months of the year and it works for 12 months out of this division. So make sure that that's all in there. I click on done. Okay, and I have my industry average versus my uh, my ratio versus my in or the industry average against my sales forecast. All right, so I could change this to two. Okay, it goes up a little bit. Okay, I can forecast a little bit more on gas. Okay, I can go into my overhead wages, add another employee, general general manager made thirty five last year, planning on spending forty this year. Okay, and my labor burden is probably going to stay at the same percentage. Okay, click save changes, and there I am. Okay, so now I've got my uh, my overhead section completed. Okay, this is going to change. This is why we say to come back and visit your budget on a you know quarterly or annual, but or by uh, every six months, whatever it is, biannually. Um. Every three months, every six months, every nine months, you want to make sure that you hop in there and check your budget. Again, you know, if I'm planning on giving so and so a raise this year, I want to put in what their uh, what their amount is going to be with their raise. Okay, so if I'm planning on he's planning on you know he's at forty thousand now, but I'm planning on upping him to forty five thousand for this year. Can I can I uh, afford that? Sure, put it in here and let's see where I'm at. Okay, the next section once you've finished off your overhead budget is your profit and loss statement, okay? So your profit and loss statement is just gonna give you a quick synopsis or a quick summary of everything that you've just put into your actual budget and see where you are, uh, see where you're at, okay? So I look at my total income, okay? So my sales forecast of $1.16 million. I look at my cost of goods sold is 806,000 or 69.5% of that sales forecast which basically gives me a gross profit of $353,000. Okay, but now I have to look at my indirect expenses, so my overhead costs of 275, which leaves me with a net income of $78,000. Okay, so that's my net profit at the end of the year. Okay, now that net profit equals a 6.7% profit margin. So now whenever I quote out on an estimate, I'm going to automatically my est or my estimates will automatically be calculated at 6.7% profit on top of all my break even numbers so that I can hit that $78,000 sales forecast or net revenue forecasted number. Okay? So, kind of taking all that into consideration, we've worked together, we've built our budget out, okay? We figured out what our profit margin percentage, but what else is there? Well, you're going to have questions. We understand that. This today was kind of a shotgun approach. 
and we've only got a few minutes left, unfortunately, today to, to kind of really speak about your budget. So what should you do next? Well, in my humble opinion, as a client success manager here with LMN, I, I would probably suggest that you reach out to your client success manager and book a budget review. Okay, it's free. You have one-to-one -one support with client success managers like, less, uh, like myself. Each one of you are assigned uh, your own client success manager. Reach out to that individual and, and book a budget review meeting. Okay, if you've got questions, maybe you're not so sure about one thing versus another thing, where you've put something versus where you should have put it, speak with them, okay? Um, again, it's a half hour call, it's one on one live, uh, you know, screen share where you can work together and fine tune your budget a little bit more and maybe look at some of the other areas where you can tweak it a little bit to, to be a little bit more profit or profitable. Okay. Uh, there are other ways to even, you know, calculate out what your budget is against your overheads, against your cost of goods sold and against your, uh, indirect costs and provide you with a enhanced profit margin there are ways to do it but again uh, speak with your client success manager and they'll help you out with that okay uh, I do have a couple minutes for questions so I'm sure if anybody has any questions uh, feel free to just throw it in the little chat window uh, and we'll I'll take any questions that have come up since uh, we started talking about the budget today okay and if there aren't any uh, we'll just uh, skip over to our recap and uh, we'll go from there and we'll, we'll finish off today's webinar as it's getting close to uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time, okay? Uh, so it doesn't look like I have, oh, wait a minute, I do have one question here. Uh, if we have a full-time mechanic working at our shop, where would we enter the mechanic salary? Okay, perfect, uh, great example. Um, some of you are uh, at that stage where you do have a full-time mechanic that fixes all of your equipment, which is great. Um, so in that situation, if you do have one of those individuals or a, a couple of those individuals, those you want to include in your overhead wages, okay? You're not going to be billing out your um, mechanic on an estimate, so therefore they're an internal or a, uh, you know, a fixed cost in regards to your overhead or an indirect cost, if you will. So make sure you include that individual's wages and their hours uh, in your overhead section, so under the overhead wages section. Okay. Uh, and last question here is, uh, what is the difference between gross profit and net profit? Okay. So your gross profit is basically your sales forecast less your cost of goods sold. So your labor costs, equipment costs, material costs, and subcontractor costs. Net profit comes into consideration after you take out your indirect costs, which are your overhead expenses. So uh, remember in that summary that I showed you in the, uh, the profit and loss statement or the analysis section, or sorry, yeah, the profit and loss statement, we showed what our sales forecast is, less our job expenses or cost of goods sold. That gives me my gross, gross profit. Then I subtract my uh, indirect costs or my overhead costs, and that gives me with my final net profit. Okay. So to recap what we covered off in the past hour, uh, we look at forecasting our sales. We enter our field labor, our equipment, our material, our subcontractor, and overhead costs. Okay, we analyzed our budget for profit and saw where we were at against, again, our gross profit versus our net profit. And now we look at activating our budget. Oh, we did not do that. So quick little hop over to LMN. How do you activate your budget once it's done? Go back up to your budget info screen. Okay, and once everything is all said and done and you're happy, you click on the activate budget button. Okay, and now your budget is active and you'll see it down here as active as well, uh, down here in your budget properties. Okay, one thing that I didn't talk about uh, that you can do as well for those of you who are planning on splitting your company-wide budget into different divisions, once you've done that, you can mark your budgets as default. So down here, if you're using, uh, if you've created a budget for just your design build and install budget or uh, install work, then you want to set this that budget as a standard estimate default. And again, uh, if you and then the other budget that you've created for maintenance work, so uh, snow and ice as well as seasonal maintenance, you want to set that one as your service estimate default. Okay, and you just click that budget, the, the service estimate budget off as well. Okay, so it just keeps it nice and easy. You're always using the right budget for different types of projects. But again, talk to your cluster, client success manager and they'll help you out with um, default budgets as well as uh, divisional budgets. 
Okay. And back to our recap. Okay. And sorry, we activated our budgeting for estimates. So that's what we just covered off there with our defaults. So again, we can mark it as default for both, or again, if it's divisional, one for the other. Okay. Um, for those of you who, again, who are new to LMN, uh, you've got a fantastic new resource called the Academy Online. Okay, this is a free software that allows you to take training, um, learn LMN at your own pace. You can do it at home, you can do it online. There's even an app you can download. Okay, so once you've logged into Academy Online, there is an app uh, or there are directions on how to actually download the LMN Academy app. Uh, so you can actually just do some of the training on your phone or on a tablet, uh, again, at your own time. But again, if this is your, if you're new to LMN, this is going to be one of your best ways to learn the software, uh, and again, at your pace, okay? Uh, secondly, uh, another resource that you have available is the forms library. Uh, so the forms library can be found in LMN Estimating. So it's just a uh, group of forms that you can use to you know, uh, evaluation processes, health and safety, administration, whole bunch of different uh, forms in there. So I highly advise, hop into the forms library, take a look and see what's there. Uh, and again, it's all completely free, so download what you need. And also, let's take a look at our forums. So Facebook and LinkedIn, we have two user groups. Uh, again, these are for uh, LMN users, by LMN users. So if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you have any tips and tricks that maybe you've, you've found within LMN that works for you that you think would, would benefit somebody else, then just go, uh, again, join up or sign up to our Facebook and LinkedIn user group. Uh, and again, have some fun. You know, reach out to some um, uh, network with some other LMN users, okay? And lastly, make sure you tune in tomorrow uh, for Estimating 101. Tomorrow we're gonna be looking at the CRM uh, the new CRM app uh, and how that uh, how they work together and how you can, can set that up. So that's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, go lmn.com forward slash training and register. Even if you can't make the webinar tomorrow, register for it and you'll get a copy uh, of the webinar uh, emailed to you at the end of the day. So um, that's it for me today. Hope everybody's learned something and uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. So from now on, Take care, stay safe, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.